kind trying to do as they that seems good to them without being connected to their creator, their designer. You think now, how can we do anything if the one who's designed us and given us purpose has put giftings in us and callings on us and we're disconnected from that one? The one who would impart all those things and reveal all of those things to us, there's a gap between us. And, and, and so, of course, this is largely our mandate uh, uh, as ambassadors for Christ that we would have the ministry of reconciliation where we would restore, see people restored to that relationship with their father and come into a functional place again. They would be able to receive healing from all that they floundered with from being disconnected. Of course, that's the great truth of, of the Bible. As we see in the little booklet, sometimes four spiritual laws or steps to peace with God, there's a little picture of a cliff on one side and a cliff on the other side. We've been separated from God. We're on one side, God's on the other. And we see the cross, the horizontal beam of the cross going across the gap. And he bridges the gap. So we're able to once again be reunited with our Father through the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and us receiving what he's done for us. So he is the provision. He bridges the gap. He heals that separation that's there. So, I would just want to be encouraged today that we want to be in that place of being connected to our Father and being connected to the Lord. Uh, I was thinking of the movie, what's it called, Fly Away Home, where a family has some goose eggs they find in their acreage and they, uh, the eggs hatch and they raise these geese. Uh, and you seen that movie where the, the man makes, has an ultralight plane and he paints it like a like a goose and he teaches them they follow him and he teaches them to fly and to migrate eventually and i think they call it imprinting so when the young geese see whoever they see initially they think that's their parent and somehow we're imprinted by god his his dna is in us and on us yeah. sometimes we hear them say that we have like a heart-shaped a God-shaped heart inside of our heart, and only He can fill it. I think that's largely it. Somehow His imprint is on us. And until He takes that place, we have that connectedness and that relationship with Him. Somehow we're floundering. We may do whatever we think and somehow get by, but uh, there's much failing and floundering and dysfunction. But when we're connected with Him as we ought to be, then he releases all the resources and all that we need to be who we ought to be. You think of different ones in the Bible. John the Baptist as someone who was obviously connected with the Lord. He knew who he was, what he was doing, what his calling was. One called to prepare the way. There was no floundering and no wondering what I'm here for. Now, had he not been connected, he might have been in the wilderness, but he would have been just floundering in the wilderness, probably. Wondering what life is all about, like so many people today are in that place. Or Jesus as well, our great example of one connected to the Father. Amen. And he said, you know, he, could, he couldn't do anything or say anything except what he sees the Father doing. And so you think, what, what would he have done if he had not had that connection? If there would have been a separation with the Father? in a loss of identity, but he too knew exactly what he was here for. It says that he knew where he came from and he knew where he was going. And it's an amazing thing with him that, that he knew that his, actually, the reason he was coming was to die. And you think if, if we would know our purpose and destiny was to die, that might be scary if we actually knew with that kind of a clarity what God had called us to. And I think with such a resoluteness, he walked in and moved towards the 
said he sent his set his face like flint to accomplish what God had called him to do. And so, so Lord, is make us have a strong connection with you. The Lord, imprint your identity on us in such a powerful way. Lord, we thank you for this team you're assembling here, for the gifts and anointing you have on each one. Father, I pray you continue to release such a clarity uh, of your plans and purpose for each one. We would take up our place in a mighty way in this region. I thank you, Lord, for what you, what you have put in each one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You think of the word that the Father had for the son who had never, who hadn't left him. He said, son, you have always been with me and all that is mine is yours. All that is mine is yours. And, and that's how it would be with us, being connected with the Father. All wisdom, insight, direction, giftedness, provision, healing, deliverance, uh, wisdom, just everything we need to be who you would have us to be is there. Thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. God, help us to be the parents we ought to be as well, the fathers and mothers we ought to be. Such an amazing high calling just to be a parent and to think that somehow we have such enormous influence on our children for good or bad, and especially they say in the early years from age one, baby to age five, I think, is a huge molding time and uh, how we need to have God's uh, wisdom and that connectedness to him to be who we ought to be as parents. Amen.